सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली What should we make of the Ashok Gehlot fiasco? What lessons are there for the Congress? Well, there's nothing new to be said, really. But there are two basic iron laws of politics, and unfortunately, the laymen often don't get it. Politicians should get it. However, I think that what the events of the last week show us is that the Congress doesn't really get it. The two iron laws of politics are simple. Iron law number one. is that power is everything when politicians tell you that they've joined politics because they care about the poor or because they care about the nation or whatever they may or may not be telling the truth but what they really care about is power they will argue in their defense that you can't have the poor if you don't have power fair enough we won't get into that discussion but for politicians power is everything now power always trumps position you can go to politician you can say i will make you king of the world i will call you your imperial majesty but as long as it's a meaningless title it doesn't matter it holds no appeal for him or her what politicians want is something where they can exercise power any politician offered king of the world as just a title or minister of state will take minister of state because at least a minister of state has real power Now you would think that everyone would understand this, but the Congress hasn't understood this. It went to Ashok Gehlot surreptitiously, of course, because this is a free election, and said to him, "Why don't you stand for Congress president?" So far, so good. But what it also asked him to do was give up being Chief Minister of Rajasthan. Now, why would any man give up the Chief Ministership, a position that has real power, for the Congress presidentship? A position that has no power and only involves the difficult task of making the Congress electable again. They went further. They expected that not only would he give up the chief ministership, he would hand it over to his big rival, to Sachin Pilot, a man he has relentlessly attacked again and again. Why would anyone expect that he would do this willingly? What about that iron law? Power is everything. It always trumps position. the congress forgot about that there is a second iron law and it consists of an unspoken contract between the leader and his or her followers the way it works is this a leader can expect whatever they he wants or she wants from the followers as long as he or she can get them elected let's take examples from recent politics let's take mr modi who is absolute monarch of the bjp he can do pretty much what he wants and nobody will say a word that's not because mr modi has superhuman past it's because mr modi gets the bjp elected his mlas his legislators don't necessarily agree with him but they know that unless they pledge allegiance to him unless they display obedience to him they cannot go out and ask for votes in his name he gets them elected so they listen to him When politicians lose the ability to get people elected they lose power. It's not an Indian phenomenon you can see it all over the world. Let's take recent politics in the UK. Boris Johnson is a deeply flawed individual with one only a glancing acquaintance with the truth. Everybody knew this and yet the Conservative Party voted to make him leader because it believed that he could win an election. And yes He won an election by a large margin, but when the tide turned, when the poll said that he would lose the next election, the Conservatives had no compunction at all about dumping him and selecting somebody else. You don't need to go that far. I mean, look at Indian politics. Narasimha Rao was absolute monarch till he lost the 1996 election. Then he became a pariah. Or take the BJP itself. Mr. Advani lost one election and imagined that he could continue and try and win the next election. But the BJP membership knew better. They knew he wouldn't win the election. They knew they had to get somebody else, which is why Mr. Modi, who was considered electable, became BJP leader. You know what? They were right. 
he did win elections for the BJP. That's the golden rule, the iron law of politics. You're only as good as the election you can win for your party. Now, the Congress party has a problem. First of all, I don't think Sonia Gandhi understands the first iron law, that politics is all about power, that power always trumps position. That's partly a consequence of her own circumstances. She has never hankered or after or been fixated with power herself. In 1991, the Congress offered her the presidentship and therefore the prime ministership. She said no and nominated Narasimha Rao. In 2004, she could have been prime minister again. She said no and nominated Banmohan Singh. Power doesn't matter to her as much as it matters to the average politician. And perhaps as a consequence, she underestimates the appeal of power. There's another problem, which is that while in most political parties, as we've seen, people are quite ruthless about dumping people, leaders who lose elections, that's not true about the Congress. After Sonia got involved in politics, the Congress lost two elections. There was a revolt by Sharad Pawar, Sangma and various others, but the party backed her. Even after the last election, two election defeats, the party never said it was her fault. She stayed on and she was allowed even to nominate Rahul Gandhi as her successor. Such is the reverence with which the Congress treats her. All this, I think, leads her to believe that her position is intact, that she can behave like the Congress presidents of old, that she can make chief ministers, unmake chief ministers. And as far as she's concerned, Congress president was the top job. It's the job she held. Why would anybody else not want it? But times have changed. Congress president is no longer what it used to be. A chief ministership is what it has always been. So do you expect someone like Gellert to go quietly? That, I think, is the basic problem with Sunny Gandhi's style of leadership now. Because she has a special position in the Congress, because she is not power hungry, she makes the mistake of thinking that everybody else is like her. They're not. And the Gelot fiasco tells us that they're not. What could have happened? First of all, I don't think Gelot was happy about giving up the chief ministership of Rajasthan. He'd expected to hold on to two jobs. He got worried only when Rahul Gandhi told him that the law was one man, one post. Then I think he hoped to get one of his proxies appointed. That failed because the Congress told him Sachin Pilot would take over. Why would Gelot give away all his power? Tell his MLA, sorry chaps, I know you're loyal to me, but now a man we all hate is going to take over and you have to be loyal to him. It just wasn't going to happen. Even now, if some kind of deal is worked out, and as of now, as I'm doing this, nothing's been worked out. The best you can expect is that Gelot will tell his MLAs, okay, we've got to have Sachin Pilot as a chief minister, but make sure you don't let him function. And what will happen then? The Congress will lose Rajasthan, just the way it's lost all the other states. So the iron laws do apply. They apply in the Congress. They didn't make Jyotiraditya Sindhya chief minister of Madhya Pradesh, didn't give him a Rajya Sabha ticket. They thought he would stay quiet. He didn't. He joined the BJP. He caused the collapse of the Congress government. They did the same with Sachin Pilot. He very nearly joined the BJP and Gelot saved the government with great difficulty. In Punjab, they humiliated Amrinder Singh and they promoted Navjot Singh Sidhu. What happened? They lost Punjab, Amrinder joined the BJP and Sidhu's in jail. So I think there are lessons for the Congress. So far, at least Sonia Gandhi and the rest of the Gandhi family have been immune to the iron laws of politics. But the iron laws catch up with everyone. That's the way it is. You can be an exception, but only for so long.